You really don't need to keep sticking to that generic list of alternative careers for doctors that you keep seeing everywhere. If you're a doctor or medical student who's been toying with the idea of leaving medicine, then you very likely have come across at least one very generic list of alternative careers for doctors. To put it very simply, you do not need to limit yourself to those lists. You can quite literally choose any path you want to choose. And whilst those generic lists may be a good place to start, there are many different paths you can take and your medical experience or your medical degree is not going to hinder hinder you in taking those paths, it's only going to propel you forward. I've taken so many random paths since leaving medicine six years ago and I'm so glad I did because it has opened up so many opportunities that I honestly never thought I would have. So in today's video I'm going to give you 50 non-generic alternative careers for doctors and medical students just to prove my point that there are so many more options out there for you than you think. I've loosely broken up this list into five different categories with 10 job examples each and out of respect for your time and my voice box, I'm going to keep the job descriptions very brief. I do have a PDF guide that lists 100 alternative careers for doctors and that's in the description below. That goes through the job descriptions in more detail. There are some genuinely interesting roles in here and I guarantee that there's at least one that you've never heard of. As we go through this list together, please keep in mind these two things. At any point, you can literally just cross out the medical or health aspect of that job role and it could still be a very valid alternative career path for you. And the second thing to keep in mind is that these roles may differ in terms of how much upskilling or retraining you might need to do. This list is just meant to show you what's possible out there, not necessarily how easy it might be to get into that new role. I'm stopping for a quick intermission to let you know that this video is a little bit long, so you can click on the chapters that you think you might be most interested in below. Otherwise, enjoy, and if you stick through the whole 25 minutes, I love you. So with that being said, let's start with our first category, which is health tech and innovation. And the first career that we have in this sector is clinical UX designer. And this role involves creating user-friendly experiences for digital or physical products. It's a really fun, creative and analytical job that's increasing in demand. The role encompasses many different things like researching what users need, building interfaces and product experiences that they truly enjoy, and maybe even writing copy that works well with the user experience as well. Next up, we have something that I find super interesting, which is virtual reality or augmented reality healthcare solutions developer. It's a bit of a mouthful, but basically this role involves developing virtual reality and augmented reality solutions for healthcare, such as VR therapies or AR assisted surgeries. These technologies have the potential to help us with medical education for students and doctors, planning surgeries, developing mental health treatments, educating patients and more. Next up we have a nanomedicine specialist, researcher or scientist. And these roles include developing and researching nanotechnology based treatments. Nanomedicine is a super interesting field and it has the potential to create really big changes in treatment, diagnosis and more within the healthcare sector. Next up we have a healthcare robotics engineer. And this role involves building and designing robots that can be used in healthcare settings. These robots can help other medical professionals with things like minimally invasive surgeries, disinfecting hospital rooms, and providing care and support to the elderly or disabled patients. Next up, we have a health-focused wearables designer. Again, this role sounds super cool to me, and it basically involves designing wearable technology that can help with monitoring and improving people's health. These devices are usually worn somewhere on the body like the wrist or the arm. The devices use biosensors to collect different types of health data such as blood pressure, heart rate and activity. But if you want to try something a little less hands-on, literally, then you can go for something like being a digital health consultant. And this job basically involves sharing your expertise and giving expert advice to organizations within the health tech space. This could involve things like helping companies with recording patient data, helping them develop mobile apps or helping helping them understand their health analytics, things like that. And trust me when I say, having worked in digital health myself, that these companies could really use more medical expertise within them. Because I've seen it firsthand, and we've even seen in the media, how bad things can get when they are not regulated properly. By the way, this is a fantastic book, and I highly recommend that you read it. Next up, we have medical app software developer. This role involves building, creating, and managing healthcare applications, such as mobile apps or websites that provide healthcare services. I'm 100 
100% sure you've come across at least one of these in the past, so you might be somewhat familiar with medical apps anyway. But they can help with lots of different things like telemedicine, mental health therapies, or patient education. And keeping within that theme, the next thing we have is AI or machine learning healthcare specialist. And this would involve developing and implementing AI or machine learning driven healthcare solutions such as predictive analytical tools, diagnostic systems, or patient management systems. These fields are dramatically transforming the way that we understand and manage health, and they're only going to get bigger over the next five to 10 years. To do this role, you would have to work with massive amounts of data that could help you predict trends, diagnose diseases, and even manage patient care. And I know AI is scary, I'm super scared of it, but unfortunately or fortunately, there's no stopping it. So if it is something that you're interested in, or if you want to help with things like ethics, then it's something to consider. You could also get involved in ways that try and make sure that the AI robots don't take over and kill us all. But anyway, next up, we have a healthcare cybersecurity expert. And this role involves protecting patient data and healthcare systems from cybersecurity threats. Cybersecurity healthcare experts play a really pivotal role in helping to ensure the integrity and confidentiality of healthcare data. You would design, implement, and monitor security measures to try and protect very sensitive patient data. And the final role that we have for this category is bioinformatics specialist or scientist. And this essentially means that you would use computer software to help you collect, manage, and analyze biological data such as DNA. Usually this will require quite a lot of upskilling because you will need to be familiar with some programming software such as Python or R. But with the explosion of biological data and the growing importance of personalized medicine, bioinformatics is becoming an increasingly important field. Our next category is education academia. And for our first role in this section, we have patient liaison. And here you would act as a bridge between patients and the healthcare system. In this really important role, you would make sure that patients' needs and concerns are being addressed and that they're having as smooth of an experience within the healthcare sector as possible. The day-to-day -day roles that would come with this job would be things like helping patients book their appointments, helping them understand medical procedures, helping them navigate insurance issues, or just providing emotional support. And this is a really, really important role. And I wish we had more patient liaisons actually, because it really helps patients feel secure, heard, valued, and well cared for, which is sometimes quite often missing within the health sector. The next role is something that I think I actually would have really enjoyed at one point, and it is a medical textbook writer. And this role basically involves creating comprehensive, accurate, and educational material for students and other medical professionals. You would need to be able to take really complex topics and distill them in a way that's easy to understand for students. And quite often in this role, you would have to collaborate with lots of different experts in order to make sure that you're getting the most up-to-date, accurate information. Next up, we have health sciences high school teacher. And this job obviously involves teaching high school students different health sciences topics such as anatomy, physiology, nutrition, public health, or health careers. Your job probably wouldn't only involve talking about actual education of health sciences to students, but also talking about health careers that they may be interested in, like medicine or dentistry. But if high school's not your thing, then you can go one level up and become a medical humanities professor. And this really interesting role would involve teaching courses on the intersection between medicine and humanities subjects such as philosophy, history, or literature. In addition to giving lectures, you probably have to do some sort of research as well. And if you are into research, then you could do this next role, which is health equity researcher. And these researchers conduct and publish research based on different health outcomes and health disparities in different populations. You would essentially be working with lots of different data sets in order to try and identify health disparities, create solutions for these, and try and influence policy change within these areas. This work is super vital to promote health equity, and ensuring that people have a fair and just opportunity to be as healthy as possible. But if you want to do something a little bit more creative, you could do something like medical animation. This role would involve combining your medical knowledge with your animation skills to develop very visually appealing animations that can help with things like patient education, professional education, and more. And if you are into patient education, then you could become a patient education program designer. This is essentially creating and implementing different patient education programs to help patients better understand their health conditions and treatments. You'd probably be responsible for covering lots of different health topics or conditions, and you might also need to work with other educators or healthcare providers or even the patients themselves to create this content. And if that doesn't interest you, you might think 
think about becoming a medical heritage curator, which honestly I had not heard of before I did my research, but it sounds mega, mega interesting. And this role basically focuses on preserving and presenting historical medical artifacts and texts. You would probably work in a museum or a university or a similar kind of institute, and you would be handling very valuable historical items related to medicine, which sounds pretty cool in my opinion. But if that doesn't tickle your fancy, then you could consider becoming a critical health studies professor. And in this role, you would teach and research the social factors that affect health, like race, class, gender, and disability. You'd likely need to encourage your students and fellow academics to look beyond biology and examine how social factors impact health as well. And this is a really fantastic role for people who are passionate about health equity and social justice. And to tie into that slightly, you could also do something like medical sociology, which again uses sociology to understand how social factors can impact healthcare systems and health behaviors. As a consultant in this field, your job would involve trying to suggest changes to healthcare organizations, government agencies, and NGOs on ways that they can help improve health outcomes. Now on to our third category, which is public health and community. And before you discard this completely, there are actually some really interesting ones in here. The first one I find most interesting, and that's health policy playwright. And when I was first researching this, I thought this was totally made up, but there's actually an emerging field called research-based theater that is super interesting. Basically what they do here is that they take research data and they create theatrical performances based on that data in order to try and disseminate it in a more entertaining way. And the ultimate goal of this is to try and raise awareness or try and affect change for certain health policies and reach a broader audience in doing so because it's entertaining and people like entertaining things. But if you want to do something a bit more analytical, you could consider becoming a community health data analyst. And here you would use statistical tools to study health data from different community sources. Your job would involve spotting trends in this health data to inform local health policies or health programs. And this role is obviously super useful and helpful for communities. But if you want to reach a community in a different way, you could think about doing a public public health podcast. You could start a podcast on public health that addresses different issues within the health sector or interviews key players within the public health space. And it doesn't need to be limited to public health. Obviously, you can start a podcast in any kind of health topic or non-health topic. But if that's not enough and you wanna get a little bit more hands-on, then you could consider becoming a health-focused urban planner. And in this role, you'd be involved in the urban development planning process, but with a special interest in things that would impact community health. You would work with local governments, architects, and community members to try and build and create community spaces that promote health. For example, creating more green spaces to encourage better mental health and reduce stress or creating more walking paths so people can actively walk more. But if you're like me and you prefer food to walking, <laughs> Then you could become a nutrition education program developer for food banks. And I know that's a mouthful and I did check this actually does exist. The role would basically involve creating and implementing education programs for people who rely on food banks. They teach people the importance of a balanced diet and healthy eating and things like that. And you could work with these other organizations like food banks or you could start your own organization such as becoming a director of a nonprofit addressing some sort of health disparity. I tried to do this as my first social enterprise business. It was called Gaia Medical. I'll tell you more about that in another video. But yeah, this is a really fantastic and very interesting role. You'd basically be building a nonprofit organization or a social enterprise or charity, whatever, to help address some of the health disparities in communities that may be caused by things like race or class or gender, or basically any other social factor getting in the way of people accessing equitable healthcare. And I love that idea because I tried to do it in a very similar way, but I also love the idea of trying to do this in the future, and that is becoming a healthcare documentary filmmaker. And this would essentially mean that you'd become a filmmaker that focuses on documentaries related to health issues. And your job would be to make really interesting, engaging films to help the public better understand health problems such as global health crises, mental health issues, or new medical discoveries. And one of the biggest global health crises we have is climate change. And if you're someone who's always wanted to work within that field and impact it in some way, you could consider becoming a sustainable health advocate or consultant. And in this role, you would basically work on making healthcare services kinder to the environment. And this could look like helping to reduce waste, encouraging recycling programs, or trying to convince hospitals and clinics to use 
renewable energy. And as you may already know, climate change is most heavily going to impact minority groups or groups that are oppressed, for example, immigrants and refugees. And if this is a sector that interests you, you could also become an immigrant or a refugee health advocate. This topic means a lot to me because I came to the UK as a refugee with my family and I was super blessed and lucky and privileged to have already had family in the UK to help us navigate a lot of things. But many refugees and immigrants don't have that. And many people within this community usually have very special health concerns or issues that many other people within the population don't have, for example, past trauma. So being an advocate for them would mean things like helping them actively get access to healthcare, helping them understand health education in a way that respects their culture, or pushing for policy changes to try and help these communities. If you are someone who's going to do this, I love you, I respect you, thank you so much for your work. And to tie into helping individuals, you could also consider becoming a healthcare rights lawyer. And here, as you probably already know, you would stand up for patients and their healthcare rights. And you may even push for changes in health policy to try and improve public health. Obviously, to become a lawyer, you would need to do some sort of law degree, so this would require a lot of retraining, but it's super important and super needed. And this ties us in very nicely to our next topic, which is legal and ethics. And the first role that we have in this sector is medical ethicist. And as a medical ethicist, you would play a really vital role in the healthcare field by studying and implementing the ethical issues related to medicine and health policies. This role includes giving guidance on really complex ethical issues such as end-of-life decisions, consent for treatment, patient rights and ethical implications of novel medical technologies. And if one of these technologies is AI and that's something that interests you, again, you could become a healthcare AI ethics advisor. Because God knows we need those and we need those fast. And in this role, you would essentially be guiding healthcare organizations on how to use AI ethically. You could provide advice on patient privacy, consent, transparency, and ensuring fairness in AI decisions. You could work with hospitals, tech companies, research bodies, or regular regulators to help them tackle the unique ethical issues that AI might bring. But if AI scares the hell out of you like it does for me, then you might want to do something else like a medical patent analyst. And in this role, you would inspect and evaluate medical patents, looking out for potential legal and ethical issues. You'd essentially be reviewing patent applications for medical devices or treatments or drugs and assessing their implications. You'd need to check if the inventions comply with laws, regulations and things like that. And you may also need to anticipate potential legal issues or ethical issues that may arise. And tying that back into ethics, if ethics is something you're interested in, then you could become a medical research ethics consultant. In this role, you would have to ensure that medical research studies are being done ethically and they comply with all the laws and regulations that they need to comply with. But if research isn't your thing, then this next one might be your thing, and that is being a medical cannabis compliance expert. And no, you can't just sit there and try all the products, but what you can do is ensure that medical cannabis businesses are following all the laws and regulations that they need to follow. And this role would be particularly interesting to someone who has a background in healthcare and law and is particularly interested in medical cannabis. Moving on from that one, the next role would be a clinical trials ethics specialist. And again here, you would be overseeing the ethical considerations in the planning and execution of clinical trials. So basically, you would have to ensure that these clinical trials are being conducted ethically. And it's a really important role to make sure that the participants in research studies are being treated fairly and ethically. Next up, we have healthcare contract analyst. And here, you would just make sure that contracts in healthcare settings are abiding by the laws and and maybe you would do some work on trying to minimize the risk within those contracts. You could also become a confidentiality advisor where you would be working with healthcare organizations or companies to make sure that they're being compliant with privacy laws such as HIPAA or GDPR. But GDPR is literally the bane of my life, so I'm gonna move on to something a little bit more interesting for me, which is ethical hacker for healthcare systems. So here you would basically be using your expertise in cybersecurity to identify potential security risks in healthcare digital systems to help protect patient information. So you would basically ethically try to hack into systems to identify their weaknesses so that you could improve upon those weaknesses and make sure that the bad hackers don't get in. So you're a nice, good hacker. And that brings us on to the last role in this sector, which is telemedicine legal consultant. And this would involve navigating and addressing legal matters that are related to remote healthcare services, like having a GP consultation online over Zoom. And with more and more of these remote services coming into place, we're going to need more and more legal help to make sure that they're being done ethically and safely and things like that. And that brings us on to the final category, which for me, I find the most interesting, and that is creating 
creative and alternative careers. And the first one that we have here is healthcare interior designer. And I know that sounds made up, but for real, it is like a thing. And here, basically what you would do is you would consult on or even do design for healthcare facilities to try and improve patient comfort and outcome. And you could really make a difference to a patient's experience within the healthcare sector if you have a good understanding as a medical doctor of what the treatment might entail or what the patient might need. And this would involve things like choosing calming colors for the rooms, making sure that the patient rooms are accessible and making sure that the patient rooms are comfortable. Next up, we have medical video game consultant. There there are more and more video games coming out in the health sector related to things like professional training or patient education or therapy. And as a medical professional with medical background, then you could be very valuable to these video game developers in helping provide your expertise on the matter. But again, if you prefer clothes to video games like I do, then you might want to become a medical fashion designer. Think about it. Who's designing the patient clothes? Who's designing the doctor scrubs? Someone out there is designing them and that could be you. Not only can you help create clothing that would be more comfortable for patients or more comfortable for doctors, you could also help create clothing for people with special health needs. But if you prefer food to fashion, then you could become a nutrition focused chef. You can combine your cooking skills with your nutrition knowledge to come up with really healthy meals. You could cook meals that meet special requirements for places like hospitals or sports teams. If you are going to cook some nice meals, make sure to send me some. <laughs> okay, next one is health and wellness travel blogger. Travel blogging is super fun. Or look looks really fun anyway, I would love to do it one day, but you could do a focus on health and wellness, or to be honest, you could just be a travel blogger. You could focus on things like reviewing health focused spots or go to wellness spas or review gyms or something like that. But instead of reviewing other organizations, you could create your own organization and become a wellness retreat organizer. And here you could run health focused holiday retreats, which sounds mega fun if you ask me. And again, if you're gonna do this, please invite me. You might have activities such as yoga, meditation, fitness classes, and you could have a spa or healthy meals, things like that. Just a holiday that promotes health. Sounds super nice. But if you don't like the idea of organizing a massive retreat, you could think about becoming a health and wellness book author. You could just write and publish books on different health topics. You could either do this in a more fictional way or a non-fictional way. Up to you, the world is your oyster. The next one you've probably come across in your clinical career, but you've never considered the actual job behind it, and that's clinical simulation designer. And here you would create lifelike clinical training solutions for medical professionals. Remember when we have to go into those training rooms and there would be a scenario and we would have to react and do something about it? Well, someone has to design those actual scenarios and that could be you. Next, we have clinical music therapist. And again, this sounds mega fun. And what you would do here is you would use music to help with therapies for patients. Musical therapy can really help promote physical rehabilitation, improve mental health, help manage pain, and give patients a means of expressing themselves. And then last but not least in this category, you would have never guessed it, you could become a hospital clown. I know you think I'm crazy, but for real, like you could become a hospital clown, especially in like a pediatric hospital. That brings so much joy to these pediatric patients. And if you've ever watched Modern Family, being a clown could be the purpose and meaning that you're searching for your whole life. You could literally become anything my list is not the only thing that you can do. Other people's lists are not the only thing you can do. Just keep your eyes open, keep your arms open for opportunity and go with your gut, go with what feels exciting and good for you. Like I mentioned at the start, I do have a PDF guide with 100 alternative careers for doctors, including some of the more generic, probably easier routes to take. So if you are interested in that, you can download it from the link in the description below. Otherwise, I appreciate you for sticking through those 50 careers. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.